Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome you to our online broadcast. We don't believe it's by chance that you showed up here today, but we do believe that there will be a word that'll be shared that'll be a blessing to your life. So we want you to come on in, go ahead, grab your drinks, grab your food, get your breakfast together, however you're going to do it. Sit down with the family, enjoy the word, because I believe this will be something that'll be shared that's going to bless your life. So for our first timers, we want to welcome you in here as well. On behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we want to say welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. We thank God for you showing up here today. And so we pray that this word will impact your life and will be a blessing to you. Hey, y'all, we've been dealing with the series entitled Nothing Just Happens. And so even starting at the beginning of this year, knowing that our life must be intentional, that we are not just going, the will of God is not just going to automatically happen in our lives, but there are going to be things we're going to have to do on a consistent and regular basis to get the job done and to receive God's fullness, to receive his perfect will in our lives. And so we've been dealing with that. Now, currently we're talking about vision. Last week, we started this dealing with the subject of vision. What is vision? Vision ultimately is what do you see? What is it that God is showing you for your life? And so you're going to have to know how to hear the voice of God. And we're going to talk about some of those things. And we've talked about the subject of prayer, that prayer even positions you to receive from God what it is he has for you to do. And so now as we begin to deal with vision, we want to talk about fulfilling that vision. What's the process of fulfilling that vision? of getting some things going and moving in the direction that you need for them to go. And so we want to talk about that today. But before we do that, we want to have a quick word of prayer, and then we're going to get into today's message. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. We thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring wisdom and knowledge and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach your holy written word reverently, and we thank you, Father, for manifesting yourself in our presence. We covet the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation and demonstration. We thank you that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. Father, you know who's watching today. You know who you want to listen to this message and this word today. I ask that you begin to speak to them expressly. Let them hear the voice behind the word. Let them hear what you're directly saying to them. Help them to get motivated to get the job done for in these last days because of the return of the Lord Jesus is at hand. And so, Father, we just thank you. We give you praise. We rebuke the wicked one, Satan himself, and we shut down every demonic force that would try to disrupt the covenant of promise your will being done in the lives of your people. So we protect them, we cover them by the blood of Jesus. The angels of the living God are dispatched to watch over each and every household. We bless you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen, y'all, we're dealing with vision, vision, vision. What do you see? What is God showing you? See, this vision, it, it gives, vision gives you clarity. It gives you direction. Vision gives you the goals that you need to begin to set. And then even this past week, we talked about um, developing action plans to achieve goals. And those goals come out of the vision that you see. What is God showing you? What is it that you believe that you are created and called by God to do? That's the vision for your life. And so God wants you to hone in on that. He wants you to be sound in that. For a lot of you, you struggle with God. What is my purpose? What is the, the thing? What is it that I need to do? But now as you begin to hone in on vision, vision, it could be a vision for your family, vision for your finances, vision for your physical body, your health and well-being, vision where relationships are concerned, vision where purpose is concerned. And so these are some key components, some, some building blocks that we want to give you today <clears throat> to help you and to assist you to get that thing done. So now let's go to the book of Matthew chapter nine. This is going to be our text for the day. We're going to dig into this thing and see how the Lord Jesus himself began to map out vision, the vision that the Father gave to him. So now in verse 35, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, and it, re and it reads, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. 
But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. He says, pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Now we're going to go to chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him, called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them, the disciples, power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names, and then it goes in verses 2 through 4, it talks about the names of the 12 apostles. And it goes through that. And then it picks up in verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into uh, any city of the Samaritans, into ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then he says, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, now freely give. So now we, there's a lot that we can unpack here. And Jesus begins to teach this process of fulfilling a God given vision. And so we need to study this out and map this out. So what's step number one? What's the first thing that we begin to see that we're going to talk about eight things, but we want to talk about number one first, take initiative to obey. Listen, you got to get active. You got to get active in your service. Whatever it is God has called you to do. It says here in verse 35 in chapter 9, it says Jesus went about all the cities and the villages. He took initiative. He went. He did not waste time. When he was dressed in power, when he came, when he was baptized by John in the River Jordan, and he was anointed by the Spirit of God, he went into the wilderness, endured 40 days in the fasting and praying in the wilderness. That's in Luke 4. And then it says this, he came out in the power of the spirit. So now he was dressed for his assignment. He had the nature, the power of God upon him to get his assignment done. And then he did not delay. He immediately began to go and do the work that God created and called for him to do. So now you got to understand this, that we have to take initiative. We have to get in service. We have to get involved. Now, I tell people this all the time. If you don't know what it is that you were created and called to do, at least find a place that you can connect to where there is a vision for that particular um, entity, that particular house, that ministry, the business, whatever it is, that organization that you can bear witness with and say, hey, this is something I can get involved with. I can help out in these areas so that at least it's easier for God to direct you into something, even if it's something that you begin to see, hey, I've tried it, I really don't like this, and then God can steer you in another direction. Now, do you listen, you can serve with children's ministry and realize, hey, I don't like children, I don't like dealing with children, I don't have the patience for it, or none of that, and, and listen, that's cool. Now, if you can't do that, you might wanna work in a media department, a section or whatever. You might wanna greet people, whatever the case is. Find somewhere you can lock in so that you can serve. And in that process, God can begin to steer and direct you. If that's not the thing you're supposed to do, it can be the thing that leads you to the thing that you're supposed to do. But you have to get active and have to get involved. Number two, you need to communicate the truth that you already have. Jesus went about in verse 35, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Um, now, this is something that you can kind of deal with where ministry is concerned and the teaching, um, whether it's God has called you to preach or something like that. One of the things here is the point is, or the key is work with what you already have with the knowledge that you already have. So many times we wait to try to get to a certain place to think that, okay, when I get to this place, then I'll be ready to start. You just got to get started and to give what you know. I tell teachers this all the time. You can only preach or teach what you already know. And then as you give what you have, God gives you more. Then you get greater revelation, greater insight, but you must start. So even for us as the body of Christ, the Bible calls us ministers of reconciliation, reconciling the world back to God. The thing that you can begin to share, you may not be a biblical scholar, 
You don't know all of the Christian needs. You don't know all of the verses in the Bible, but you can at least share your testimony. How did God minister to you? How did you get born again? How did your life change as a result of your personal relationship with Christ? That's how you can get started. Don't compare yourself with somebody else and how well versed they are and how they do things. God has you there. He wants to use you. And that's where your growth and development starts as to him using you where you currently are. Number three, you need to observe and understand the reality of human conditions. You need to observe and understand the reality of human conditions. Now, this is important because in verse 36, but when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. He saw the multitudes. He recognized that there were people who needed him. There were people who needed their needs met. He recognized the condition that they were in. Sometimes we have to really recognize the condition that people are in because it'll help move us and motivate us to assist them and to help them. Now, this goes into number four as well. Allow God to give you a heart for a specific need. Some people call it a burden that you have this heart for this particular group. Some of you may have a heart for the homeless. Some of you may have a heart for people who are bound by drugs. Some of you may have a heart for people in marital situations or relationships. Some of you may have a heart to deal with people that are struggling in poverty and you want to teach on finances. Whatever it is, you observe the need that the people have. You assess the needs and then God gives you a heart for that need or you find the place where you have a heart for the need that you see or that the need that's there for them. So some people, you know, this is the interesting thing about that. You can't always let somebody else's heart or the thing that they really have on them, their passion, determine what you do because they'll put it on you. It's like, you know what? Everybody need to be out there. You know, you need to be in the streets with us, with the homeless. Well, you have a heart for that. Now I have a heart to help. So I may just so towards that, but my heart may be in training people and developing people. Your heart may be in giving the fish. My heart may be in teaching them how to fish so we can work together. I'll help support you while you give them the fish, bring them to my classes so I can train them and teach them how to not to be back in that situation again. One person has a burden in one place or a passion in one place. Somebody has a passion in another place. And so many times what I see people arguing over one another's passion, just because you have that passion, don't put that on me. That's not what God created me to do. That's what he created you to do, but we can still work together. That's kingdom collaboration. And so you got to find out what's that thing that's in your heart that you really have um, a thing where, you know what? I just really, man, I, I just have this, this desire and this passion in me to bring understanding to people or to help people come out of their situation or to help them build you know, their financial stability in their lives because I know what it's like to be in poverty and lack and want and to know what, is not, what it's like not to know where my next meal is coming from. I wanna help other people come out of that situation. So you lock into the thing that God has called you to do. And so watch this in verse 36, it says Jesus was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep having no shepherd. They were scattered abroad. And so because they were scattered, he had a shepherd's heart. That's where the, actually the word pastor comes from. The Bible calls Jesus the chief shepherd. We as pastors in this earth, we are under shepherds, Jesus being the chief shepherd. And so now Jesus, the head of the church, we're the body. And so now if you're called to even be a pastor, you got to have a heart for sheep. If you don't have a heart for sheep, you should not be a, a shepherd. Those are things that we got to understand. What is it that you have a heart for? And then because really the funny thing is when you have a heart for something, you identify it quickly. You begin to see it wherever you go. Now, I may see somebody that's in need of training. Somebody else may see somebody in need of, they need some food. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Give them the food. But now let's show them how to get some money so they don't have to keep coming for you to get food anymore. Whatever it is, God, listen, this is, listen, what's happening now in the earth is this, folks. The whole earth system is in groaning. The kingdom of God should be our primary way. Let me, let me make sure. I want to make sure because there's so much running through me at one time. The kingdom of God's system, God's operation of how he does things is what he wants us to function in. This is why this year has been declared 
a kingdom renaissance. God's ability, God's will, God's ideas, his innovations, his witty inventions, concepts, how he does things, how he functions and flows. He wants us to finally get to the place that we're not dependent on this world system, but we're dependent on the kingdom system. And when we de develop and depend on the kingdom system, then it can help sustain us. Even when this world system shuts down, we still know how to function. We are not freaking out like the world is freaking out. Whether they get a vaccine or don't get a vaccine, we are still covered by the blood of Jesus. The power of God abides in us. Sickness and disease have no place in us because healing and divine health is a promise of God himself. And so we have to be confident. So even if you don't get a stimulus check from the government, God is your stimulus package. And so we got to know that we got to trust him even when man fails because we operate by seed time and harvest. We have seed in the ground and God has promised to meet our every need according to his riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. So when you understand that, you begin to function in that light. Now, number five, he was like, well, what was number three and four? Well, number three was observing and understanding the human condition. But then number four was allow God to give you a heart for that specific need. Okay. So now number five, number five is to see a divine diagnosis. What do you mean by that? What is the issue to be resolved? What's the issue that needs to be resolved? See, the Bible says, Jesus said in uh, verse 37, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. See, he, watch this. The issue was not the harvest. The issue was the laborers. So many times people are praying for harvest, but you may need to start praying for laborers because the harvest isn't the issue. The harvest is already there. Is now you need to know how to harvest what's already there. So that's the issue. So he says this. A lot of times we'll be like, well, bring them in, Lord. Well, he says here, pray for people to go out to get them. So you got to understand what's the real issue. Sometimes we are so busy dealing with fruit, we never get to the root of the matter. What's the root of this thing? What's the real thing that needs to be done in this situation? What's the real need that needs to be met? Have you misdiagnosed your calling? Because now you're looking at other things. You know, when you go to the doctor and one tells you one thing, and he's like, oh, I don't know about that. Let me get a second opinion. And all these people telling you different things. It's like, okay, what's the root of all of this stuff? Because I know something's going wrong in my body, but y'all got to give me some so I at least know what to pray for. I at least know how to target that thing. And so when you're doing that, sometimes it can get frustrating when you don't see the real diagnosis of the issue that's going on. And so just like in society, we have all of these meetings, all of these town halls, all of these conversations. Okay, have we really gotten to the root of what the problem is? Once we get to the root of what the problem is, now what's the game plan to get this thing done? At least if I know what the root of the problem is, I know how to now properly pray for that thing and now say, okay, God, help us to strategize to get this thing accomplished in the earth. So what is it? See the divine diagnosis. What is God telling you to do? Because God wants us to be efficient and he also wants us to be effective. Number six, number six, pray to determine, this goes back into number five, because I've already shared it, but pray to determine what action uh, could meet that need. Pray. Then it talks about, therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. And so once we do that, let's go ahead and get that job done. Pray to, to, to determine the action that could meet that need. So once you diagnose what it is, now you pray to say, okay, how do we meet this need? So that now, because see, what this does is, it brings you into focus. It brings you into alignment, but it also helps bring discipline and it helps to eliminate distraction because once you understand what the real diagnosis is, then you won't be busy trying to treat it with other things. You know exactly what you need to treat it with. And so, okay, that's the way you get in that prayer. God, give us wisdom, witty inventions, ideas, concepts. How can we do this? How can we meet this particular need that's here right in front of us? And so now once we get that, once we hear from heaven and once we get on our face before God, then now we go into number seven, choose a team and empower them for partnership. Choose your team to assist you in getting the job done. In the book of um, here in chapter 10, in verse one, it says, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power. 
He gave them power. He gave them authority. He also gives us authority, but he gives us ability as well. This word is exousia here. And meaning he's given us this authority over the enemy, just like it says in uh, Luke 10, 19. He says, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you or harm you. God has given us power. He gave the apostles, the 12 disciples, power to go out. Um, he says he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. This is so crucial and this is so important because God has given us authority and power to carry out his mandate to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. So we have been empowered for the vision at hand. We've been empowered already to get the job done. And so now as God calls the team together and as you call your team together, who are the people? And you might be the person that's a part of somebody's team. And once you're called together and an empowerment is given, God has already graced you. And so whoever the leader of that organization is, is empowering the team. Let's get this done. God is saying we need to do this, but now we need to get it done. Can you help with this assignment? Can you bring your gifts, talents, and abilities to get the job done? And because when we do this, we come together in kingdom collaboration to get the job done. What Satan will try to do, he'll try to bring distractions along your way and across your path to get you off focus of getting your assignment done. Because if you're supposed to be a part of a team, but you're distracted about stuff you're going through in your personal life, then it begins to hinder the whole. And it begins to hinder the whole part of the vision. Listen, if one person hurt, then the whole team is affected by it. And so we as a team need to gather around even the person that's being distracted and to help build them up. And I know a lot of times we hear preaching about, well, get rid of the person and get rid of this, that, or the other. But even Jesus says, even a shepherd knows how to go away from the 99 to go for the one that's going astray. But I do understand after a period of time, you got to go back to the 99 if the one does not want to recover. And so Jesus is saying this, we got to now have this mindset. It's not just about us, folks. It's about his heavenly agenda. It's not about our feelings at the moment. There are many times that I just wanted to do some other things, but then I had to come back to remember I've been created and called by God to do this thing. So it ain't about me. I get myself together and I put myself in a position so that I can feed God's sheep. Listen, that's what we got to do. Everybody deals with life. Everybody deals with situations. And don't you let the enemy get you off focus and get you off course because he desires to sift you like wheat to destroy you and get you off of God's assignment. And so what God is saying is, if God has called you to be a part of his collaboration team in the kingdom, he has already equipped you and made you ready, but you need to be available. God has already dressed you, but you have to avail yourself. You have to now come and be a part of this work and do what God has created and called for us to do. Then lastly, he says this, take immediate action toward the fulfillment of the vision. And these 12 in verse five, in chapter 10, verse five, these 12 Jesus sent out. He sent them out. He dressed them with power and he sent them out. It takes immediate action. So many times we have so many meetings and so many things. Or how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? It comes to a place where you have to come out of the huddle and execute the play. You can't stay in the huddle forever. Sometimes people stay in their huddles in their private prayer times. You constantly praying but never doing. Uh, thank you for your praying. Part of your praying is part of the doing. You might be a part of the intercessory team. You might be a part of the team that prays for the people that's doing other things and going out there. And that's a huge part. That's your part. So if that's your part, praise ye the Lord. We need people to cover, but there need to be people that need to go out in the streets, to go into the prison system, to go into the school system, to go out there to declare the word of God, that need to structure the administrative team, that need to now function in the business aspects of, of the work of God. Whatever it is, God has called you and created you for vision. What is the vision? What is your key component, your part to play in it? And now begin to execute what it is God has called for us to do. So it's important. Vision is important. This is why it's important. Write the vision, make it plain so that those that read it can run with it. It's time to run. It's time to run like we've never run before. And God is going to empower his people in these last days to get kingdom assignments done at an accelerated rate. And you're going to begin to see as you lock into his way of doing things, 
his way. See, just because people stop preaching certain things never meant that the principle stopped. It's just that people stop preaching it. And when people stop preaching something, faith begins to dwindle down in areas that you no longer hear about. That's the thing. It wasn't that it was the season where the gifts of the spirit were in operation or the season where God just talked about prosperity. No, what was happening was he was teaching his people and building them up to add each slice of the pie to come together so that we could see the completed and the whole picture. Not just to say, well, that time is over now. No, all of this was needed so that the season that we're in now, the time that we're in now, we've already been developed in those other things so that now we can go into the earth and fulfill the kingdom mandate that God has called for us to do. So you're going to see a heightening of things once again, that people are going to come back into remember. There are people who've been in hiding, but God is saying it's time for your light to shine. Let your light shine so that men can see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. So get ready, spirit of fire. Get ready, body of Christ, for your season is here. Your time has come and the best is yet in store for you. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity to come, to come around your word, to be fed by your word, to be fed by the spirit of God. I pray right now for those that are listening under the sound of my voice, that if they're here today, that they're connected with us, that if they don't know who Jesus is, if they've never made Jesus the Lord of their life, they've always questioned, they've wondered, but they know that that void that's been there that only you can fill. We ask that you let them know that there is a no-so salvation. We pray for your will to be done in their lives today, and we bless you for it in Jesus' name. Now, if that's you today, if you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I just want you to say this simple prayer after me. If you want to receive Christ, he'll come and dwell on the inside of you. He'll give you a born-again, new, brand-new spirit. Man, he'll wipe your slate clean. This will be a fresh start for you. Ready? Let's do this. Say this. I just want you to repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now and I'm born again. I'm forgiven of all my sins. I'm a new, cre new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. All things are made new. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, you're born again. Welcome to the family of God. Now, hey, if you want to get connected with a great uh, Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, a Holy Ghost-filled church, I recommend Spirit of Fire Fellowship to you. We will train you in who you are in Christ, how to function in your authority, your rights and your privileges as a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ to help push you towards your purpose, to ignite a passion and fire for God's kingdom, his way of doing and being right, and to see God's manifested goodness, his glory seen on your lives. And so, hey, if you want to connect with us as a member, partner of this work, go ahead. Some information is coming up, how to connect with us. You can fill out the uh, connect card on our website. Um, I believe something coming up in the comments section as to how to get that done. You can go to our website at spiritoffire.us. That's spiritoffire.us. And you can fill out the connect information. Somebody from our ministry will contact you uh, how to obtain and to maintain what you came to receive. And we thank God for you. Also, at this time, we want to take an opportunity, what we call our opportunity for prosperity time, where we worship God in our giving. We believe that giving is a form of worship, that when we honor God with the substance that we receive, because he's the one that's blessed us with it anyway, that we want to honor him through tithes and offerings and our gifts of love. The tithe is the tenth. It's a ten percent of our income or our increase. And the Bible says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. The storehouse is the local church, I believe, the place of supply, the place that you're being fed. You should be connected to a place that's feeding you spiritually, that's helping to meet your needs. And as they minister, as we minister, for those that are connected here, this will be your financial supply, your, um, your storehouse, the place of supply spiritually where you will begin to sow. One of the things I tell people, now there may be somebody you don't have a church home right now. And it's a place where, hey, you're being fed consistently 
through this ministry. We do qualify as a storehouse for you because if this is a place of your primary feeding where you're being fed the word and nurtured in the word of God, then, hey, we would qualify as a storehouse. But if you are part of another ministry, listen, I encourage you to take your tithes there to your ministry. Support your pastor um, or your pastors, whether it's him or her, whoever um, the people are overseeing your ministry. Bless them. Support them. Um, but if and as you're led, you give us an offering to supply to support the work of God and to help supply towards the vision that God has called for us to do. Paul, the apostle, said it like this. We was um, in the book of Philippians chapter four. He says this, that nobody communicated with me except you all talking about the church of Philippi. And he says, I received these gifts from Epaphroditus. He says, now these gifts that you've given me have come before me as a sweet savor before God. But then he says this. He goes into verse 19 and says, now because you've now ministered to my need and helped supply for the work of this ministry, my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. So when you sow into this work, you now honor the God who has called me and my wife and my family and this ministry to come forth and to provide this word, to provide this service to the community and the world at large. Our God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. And so we pray for God to do that in your life. So there's some information that's coming up as to how you can sow, uh, different ways that you can sow. And so, listen, sow with expectation, sow in faith, believing. Whatever that you're believing for, expect the harvest to come forth. Praise God. So we declare and decree right now, hundredfold return over every seed sown in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, y'all, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. And so we once again, we want to thank you for showing up uh, with us and worshiping with us today, where we here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship are changing a culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. So I declare God's peace, God's grace, God's abundant favor upon your lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all, and I'll see you next time. Peace.